Do you know that? Does everybody get that? We serve God with joy. We don't serve God for the reward pin. For the I put up with these annoyances factor. We serve God because He is awesome. He is everything to me. I love Him with all my heart. There is nothing I wouldn't do for Him. And that kind of service is going. The service that happens today is based on we have to do this. And if we don't do this, we'll go to hell. And I have to do this for the service to God to make Him proud of me. And, and what happens is in that, we don't have any change of heart. And we have to have a change of heart. And we can change for God. But does our heart change? Let's look at Jonah. Because we think of Jonah as a great guy. He comes in, he goes to Nineveh. Everybody hates the Ninevites. Alright? So he goes to Nineveh and they all start following God. They all become believers. It goes from, it goes from this terrible, hideous nation to a nation, one nation under God, a nation of believers. And in Jonah 4 it says, Jonah was really upset and angry, so he prayed, Our Lord, I knew from the very beginning that you wouldn't destroy Nineveh. See, I was so excited. I'm coming here preaching this message. You're going to do them. And now you change your mind. You're just that. And he says, you are kind and merciful, God, and you are very patient. You always show love and you don't like to punish anyone, not even foreigners. I think the most horrible thing that I ever hear people say is they get mad at the other person and say, go to hell. How bad are you to hate somebody that was saying? How horrible is that? You know? And how horrible is it as a Christian to sit there and say, that person is going to do what they deserve? You didn't find that? Hey, you're looking at somebody and say, that person is going to get what they deserve. I hope I don't get what I deserve. You? Do you want what you deserve? No, we can have that part. Now let me die. I'd be better off dead. I'm so mad you saved these people. I want to die. The Lord replied, what right do you have to be angry? Jonah left the gate of the city and made the shelter to protect himself from the sun. He sent under the shelter waiting to see what would happen to Nineveh. The Lord made a vine grow to shade of Jonah's head and protect him from the sun. And Jonah was very happy to have the vine. But early the next morning, the Lord sent a worm to chew on the vine, and the vine dried up. During the day, the Lord sent a scorching wind, and the sun beat down on Jonah's head, making him feel faint. Jonah was ready to die, and he shouted, I wish I were dead. But the Lord asked, Jonah, do you have a right to be angry about the vine? Yeah. Do you ever notice how easier it is to say, I wish I was dead on land than when you're floating down in the bottom of the sea or in the belly of a fish? He never whined, I wish I was dead then, did it? You notice that? You hear people say all the time, I wish I was just dead. And the first thing you know about them is they don't have cancer or us. They're not really going through horrible stuff. Because it's amazing how they the horrible stuff in it. But the Lord asked Jonah, what? Do you have a right to be angry about the moment? Yes, I do, he answered. I'm angry enough to die. But the Lord said, you are concerned about a vine that you did not plan or take care of. Of a vine that grew up in one night and died the next. In the city of Nineveh, there are more than 120,000 people who do not tell right from wrong. And many cattle are also there. Do you think I should be concerned about that big city? Hmm. Gives us a thought in the missional aspect of our lives, doesn't it? How concerned are we with the big city? How are we concerned with the world? All God's creation. It's all God's people. See, we aren't always excited for God's sake. It doesn't mean more. It doesn't really get us all fired up. But when we get down to it, God is so different than us. He's really quite different than anyone. He has so much compassion for everybody. And you know, it's really tough to look at people right in face and say, Jesus Christ died for David. 
on the way to not missing it. After everything, do you, you all realize, you know that bunker that died for us? Do you all realize in some way, somehow, that he got into the knees and said, God, forgive me the sins of Jesus Christ, and accept you as the personal Savior, that you will see him in the kingdom of heaven? Do you know that? This was Bible stuff. No matter what we've done, we can be forgiven. The God wants everybody. Jesus died to save everybody. And yet we have groups of people that we don't particularly want to see saved. You know, like, you know I, I love Billy Graham. A lot of people don't like Billy Graham. I love Billy Graham. And uh, Billy Graham was, uh, when Clintons was president, Billy Graham started showing up in pictures with the Clintons all the time. But Clinton, people jumped all over Billy Graham. What are you doing with those godless people? And he said, didn't you just give the answer? That's what I'm doing with them. I'm trying to teach them about Jesus Christ. Right? You know what we're supposed to do? Oh, no decent preacher would hang out with them. The best preachers would hang out with them. Because they're doing anything they can to bring them to Jesus Christ. You know, people say that this story is a fairy tale. You can tell it's not because Jesus said that he would be in the sign of Jonah. That as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, he would be in the ground three days and three nights. And Jesus was not a Jesus that was not true. It's a very true story. It's a true story to let us know that we have to let God be. We have to listen to him. We have to be obedient to him. We have to follow him. We have to do what he desires us to do. It's a tough thing because we like control of our lives. You guys, in, in counseling, have you heard that phrase people talk about? Them? I just need control of my life. If I could just get control of my life, I'm going to tell you right now, you have no control of your life. God is in control of your life. And what you have to do is do what I did last week. And I used this in sermon before. The last day, there's been big storms and seeing the root ties and everything. And there were some six to seven foot waves. And that way, it's just about ready to crash. And I sit there, and people say, hey, where am I going to talk to you? I said, not yet, baby. Not yet. Come on. And I just, 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 and I go, now. And right when he hits that point, I die. And I put my body straight like this in the circle. And that way, it breaks and it drives my body. And the next thing you know, in five to six seconds, I got sand under my chest and my chest. Okay, and I jump up and I'm so happy and people look at me like, why don't you get a movie bar? You know, and I'm like, why? That's such an incredible, that's such a rush to do that. It's so awesome. You know what? When I take that dive, I have zero control. And I've been in 10 or 12 foot waves before, and, and I've, I've, I've went erroneously, leaned a little too far. <laughs> And you were scary about that, you're still in deep enough water, you don't know which way is up or down. Have you ever heard people drown in that way? They don't know which way. And it is a scary deal. You can have a flip, you don't know which way. The thing is, is that the wave has to open control. You know what I mean? That's your life. Things don't God has to open control of your life. The air that makes you unhappy in your life and brings misery to you is when you think you have any control. When you think that there's things that Today and your life can be sad and upset tomorrow. And then your life can be perfect the next day. But it's all based on where God puts you. And you know what? You want to get through life really good. The best thing is to put God to control because when you go through the downtown, you're not going to let that down because He's in charge and He knows He's in charge. But what brings that confidence is when you have Jesus Christ. When you're who He is, when He's come to save you. And you can be with God forever. And He loves you. And you have no fear of the impending doom and the upcoming doom. You're not doing a sermon series or sermon on the Revelation in a few weeks. I gotta tell you, I talked to some preachers who live down around the beach and they said, Brother, just watch the stuff going on down here, and then it's coming. So all the stuff we see in the Bible about times and temperatures and all this stuff. So we're seeing it all down here. 
He said it's so strange to be part of it. He said, not afraid. He said, we know nothing about it. He said, yes, we do. And that's the thing. You're going to come to us. We know Jesus. And we have to make that decision today. We know Jesus. We want him to know. You want to ask forgiveness of your sins. You want to answer the call to follow him. That's what he's asking. And when you answer that call, he's going to send you. And are you going to listen? He may just send you to work. He may send you to a lunchroom. He may send you to a bowling league. He may send you to a golf league. He may send you all kinds of places. But you know what? All he wants is you to tell people about him. And show in your life how happy he makes you. If you want that in your life today, come forward. Come today. Grab. Let him take control. We ask that you stand.